everyone, Dan from RC Mad Labs here. Today I'm sharing the trials and tribulations of the build process I went through on the ZD Racing DBX07. I chose the DBX07 framed version as my build platform because of all the videos I saw of it in detail over on a YouTube channel called Manny's RC Garage 68. Mark, who runs that channel, helped me out answered all my questions. We emailed back and forth. He shared his information with me, so I went ahead and hooked him up, shared RC Mad Labs hooker kits for the Traxxas models with him. So with all this information, and seeing at what point Mark gave up on his DBX07, I saw the challenge to finish where he left off. The link to Manny's RC Garage 68 YouTube channel is in the description below. Here are some key issues Mark shared with everyone. This is exactly the same A-arm as at the 8 skill. Front and rear are exactly the same. They use different plastic. It's more flex. Also this part is more flex. The CVD is too long. We are already here in the end of the drive cups. That means, you see here the suspension setup is stuck out from the box as the, the, the right high. You can go way higher but you cannot because if you go high, if you make, if you pull the drop screw out, you can win easy one to two centimeter, uh, three quarter of an inch uh, on suspension travel. But you cannot more steer because you have pressure from the CVD here. Even you see a little bit. You see that? Look at it now. I'm gonna show you something. So it's free, so it's locked. Huh? When you put the suspension full together, you have to clear if the pin not go out from the drive cuff. If this happens, you have to do like uh, I do on my armors. You have to put suspension traveler here. Okay, here is the list of the things I'm going to work out for the DPX07. I have to start out with a fair warning. You're going to need a micro torch or a decent soldering iron to disassemble the DBX07. When these are assembled at the factory, every screw that goes into the metal is plastered with red thread lock, except for a couple that really matter. I recommend blue thread lock for reassembly. Red thread lock only needs to be used on the steering Ackerman hardware and the front C hub hardware. When I ordered my DBX07, I already knew a lot of what I needed. I went ahead and ordered these 4mm wide wheel bearings to potentially use as an option to help fix the drive shaft issue, along with these rubber sealed bearings. I also ordered the upgrade aluminum servo saver and the upgrade aluminum C hubs. For electronics on my DBX07, I'm running ADAS through a Hobby Wing Max 6 ESC. And my choice of motor is the Spectrum 1250KV. This motor is perfect for the DBX07. Here's something to point out. Comparing the DBX07 differentials to the Arma 6S differentials, the DBX is impressive. The output drives are thicker, stronger, and the internal diff gears are the same way. I drained and cleaned all three differentials then reassembled them without oil to check for how much play there was. I found that the aluminum center diff was perfect needing no extra shimming. The only shim that I used when I put it together was a 0.3 millimeter on the bearing towards the front differential to eliminate some play when mounted in the center diff mount. The plastic front and rear diffs needed a thin 0.2 millimeter shim inside under one of the crown gears to be perfect. I did also add some shims in front of the pinion gear bearing to bring the ring and pinion gear mesh tighter. If you want a zero play steering setup, this is what you have to do. The machining tolerances are off with the upgrade aluminum C hub. I bonded the steel sleeves in place using JB Weld and allowed them to cure overnight. Before final assembly, I removed any slop in the steering hub with M5 shims. 
I then prepped the hardware with grease and red threadlock. Now on to the drive shafts. This is how the drive shafts and hubs bearings were assembled from factory. Don't do this. Here is where the claim of crappy soda can aluminum is challenged. Measuring the original bearings, comparing them to the new rubber sealed bearings, they measure exactly the same at 16 millimeters. The aluminum hubs are machined poorly, being oversized, allowing the bearing to literally drop into and fall out of their locations. My fix for this is to apply a thin coat of JB Weld to the bearing locations on the aluminum hubs with a toothpick. Before I install my bearings, I use a cotton swab to coat the outside of the rubber seals with grease. This prevents the JB Weld from adhering to the bearing face. This is the proper order of parts to get the most free play for the drive shafts that are too long. Another option would have been to install the narrow 4mm bearings for the inside bearing location. I couldn't justify downgrading the bearings, so I went with limiting the suspension travel instead. For the shocks, I replaced the shock pistons with some team-associated 1.2mm 6-hole pistons. The ZD Racing shock seals were rock hard and leaking, so I eliminated that problem by adding some much better seals, reusing one original seal per shock. I was able to prevent the drive shaft from binding in the rear by limiting the suspension travel with our bump stop kit. In the front, I still needed some more clearance, so I decided to go through and make some new hinge pin retainers, moving the lower arm out further, giving me an additional 3mm for the CVD. This still wasn't a perfect fix, because now I changed the suspension geometry. So back to limiting the suspension travel with our bump stop kit. So far, we've increased the suspension travel. The shocks have more travel left in them, but this is the limit for the parts being used. Now I need to make sure that I'm not going to lose the room I've gained for the drive shafts because of the plastic arms flexing. Here you can see the amount of flex the stock plastic has. This is great for durability, but I can't afford to have the drive shafts bottoming out in the drive cup. I made some plates for the suspension arms out of 18 gauge metal and bonded them to the arms with shugu. This made the arms more rigid. The handling and characteristics of this setup was much the same as that can be seen in videos on Manning's RC Garage 68 YouTube channel. The difference being, I was able to run standard width 5mm bearings. I didn't stay with this very long and never made any video footage of it. I wanted a lot more from this model, and so these parts were removed for this next transformation. Here is some borrowed footage from Mark to use as an example of how these modifications worked. Il en avait pris un, il a trouvé la solution, il a pris des carnets haute bodies, mais bon ça fait un peu chier, haute body c'est de haute gamme, tu vois. Ça peut de confiture pour des cochons quoi. Et euh, l'autre truc c'est que je vais les filer à Mika, c'est usine H34. Ouais. Et il me fait des cales de train de 5 mm plus large par côté. Okay. Carrément, tu vois. Ouais. Parce que les biellettes en haut c'est réglable, devant et derrière. Oui. Donc je fais juste que les triangles soient plus larges. Et du coup mes cardans ils s'écartent dans les noix. Oui, et du coup je peux augmenter mon débattement. Bon, après si les cardans du petit MT sont solides, les cardans du petit font 102 mm 5 et ceux-là ils font 105 mais comme c'est les mêmes bras c'est un peu débile tu vois sinon je prendrais ceux du MT mais je sais pas si la goupille du coup elle sera assez longue tu sais, avec les diagonales et après il faut voir s'ils sont assez solides oh, avec le sauf cerveau serré, serré ça marche mieux hein. bon là c'est sympa hein. franchement il roule bien là I chose the Arma Mojave parts because the drive shafts and suspension are very close to the same dimensions as the DBX07. All of the parts I needed were purchased off eBay. They were removed from new models and sold as a group of parts. This video is going to make these modifications look easier than it really was. I ended up purchasing many things I didn't end up needing. So in the video, I will save you that hassle. I ended up using Arma Creighton 6S hubs and stub axles because these parts get some added width that is needed. For the drive shafts, you need the Mojave shafts, but you use the Creighton stub axles. I bought these Arma Creighton hexes because they came with all the parts you see. I prefer to use the Fire Team wheel hexes. They engage the wheels all the way and won't strip out. 
you're also going to need these nylon washers for shimming the arms on the model. I'm not going to give you all the exact measurements and ruin the fun in customizing your model for you. The pictures will be plenty enough guidance for you to follow along and make the necessary modifications. For the front lower control arms, you're making clearance by removing material from the Mojave arm. You're going to be using the DBX07 hinge pins and retainers. So use dial calipers, measure the stock arms to mark the Mojave arms, remove material from the Mojave arm until they fit. In order to fit the wider Mojave front upper control arm, I made a simple 5mm spacer using the original DBX07 part as a template. These are the Mojave lower hinge pins that came with one of my purchases. I needed a custom length hinge pin for the upper control arm so I cut these down to fit. Here you can see that I have the Mojave arm centered in place with shims. For the next steps, have your modified upper and lower arms mounted on the model. To make the arms the absolute perfect length so you can have full shock travel, you need to do some measuring before modifying. You're going to want to start on the front left suspension. Before installing your front drive shaft, hub with pillow balls, remove the red aluminum caps from the control arm. You also want your shock mounted without the spring. The aluminum caps were covering a plastic nub on the control arms. You're going to end up sanding these down to get the optimal length of the arms for the drive shaft. Make sure you account for full extension as well as compression of the shock. To help with the steering geometry, I doubled up the red aluminum plates on the hub. You can also see here the amount of material that I removed from the ends of the control arms. Now for the rear lower control arms. Same as the front, you're going to use the DBX07 hinge pins and retainers. When you install the arms, you're going to shim them to be located as far to the rear as possible, meaning all of your shims are towards the front of the model. I'm cheating a little bit with this picture. You can see the lower pin for the rear hub is marked with dots, and inward towards the chassis is another pair of dots. The rear arms need to be re-drilled for the lower pin location. Material to the arms removed for clearance and reshaping. Not shown in any pictures, I opted for less rear toe-in when I chose where to redrill my arms. The sway bars are pretty simple. I used the Mojave sway bar to gauge how much to bend the DBX07 ones. I did this with a bench vise and heated the sway bar before bending it, cutting off the extra length that wasn't needed. The end links for the Mojave sway bar are used on the modified DBX sway bar. The way this works out, in the end, is the front track width is slightly wider than the rear. This makes the model handle great. I wanted the Mojave droop screws to be centered on aluminum tabs, so I made some patterns out of ABS and then cut them out of 3mm aluminum. Here's some of the other modifications I did to the model as well. I replaced the original heads with these skulls. I removed the plastic mounting stud from the helmet and glued it into the skull. I used paint protection film on my chassis so it stays looking nice. I also applied some to the roof of my model and above the headlights, other areas on the actual body. Here is some more running footage of the RC Mad Labs DBX07 EXB. I'm trying out 1 million weight oil in the center differential. What I'm finding is that 500k mixed with the 1 million is probably going to be my next choice. The 1 million is just a little too much. Even in wet grass, look at it go. <laughs> I need more power going to the front wheels. My fun runs with the DBX07 got interrupted because of the arrival of the new ZD Racing MX07. I had to rob the electronics and power system from the DBX07 to get the MX07 going. 
When I replace the DBX07 power system, I'll be uploading more running footage.